Yeah, welcome back to the Global Business Report here on Arise News. Ten years ago, the concept of uh, impact investing was almost unknown. Now, impact investing is in the spotlight with widespread news coverage and estimates of a 250 billion market. If you are an investor, a fundraiser, or with an organization that seeks capital, impact investing is relevant to you. Now, this primer defines impact investing, which examines uh, measurement issues and types of investment, and reflects on the implications of impact investing for financial returns and to market purpose. To tell us how profitable this is, we have uh, Innocent uh, Chukuma, Vice President, Impact Investment Foundation, as well as Maria Glover, Project Lead, Impact Investment Foundation. Uh, they both join me in the studio. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's good to have you with us and good morning. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, I'm going to start with you, uh, Maria. So what is impact investing, investing rather, and how crucial is this to economic development? Um, impact investing are the investments that uh, are intentional in um, solving two things right now. All right. Social focus mm -hmm. and um, financial focus. So you're looking at doing good and doing well. So these are investments that have the intention of solving measurable social and environmental mm -hmm. problems, and as well as the financial returns. Okay. Very good. So I, I think it's quite crucial for mm -hmm. us to um, look at impact investing in Nigeria because it's the more sustainable way of solving social mm. problems. We have a myriad of challenges in Nigeria. Indeed. And impact investing is one way we can really solve our problems here. Mm. So uh, that's answering your question. Very good. It's even interesting you mentioned the word measurable yeah. and sustenance of this. Very good. Uh, now, uh, in a sense, uh, let's take a look at uh, the concept impact investing. How is it different from philanthropy? Thank you. Uh, the main purpose or main intention of philanthropy is to give grants to groups who are the front line of solving social problems mm -hmm. without any expectation of financial return. Okay. So usually it's set up by individuals and organizations that have made truckload of monies mm -hmm. elsewhere and want to contribute in solving social problems that are traditionally relegated to government. Yeah. And because of the inability of government to solve those problems, mm -hmm. philanthropic uh, capital. So you say, again, uh, one of the tools of capitalism. Mm -hmm. So what the market could not solve through the demand and supply mm -hmm. process, philanthropy comes to help. Mm -hmm. But impact investing is not only interested in having measurable social impact, but mm -hmm. also returning financial profit. Mm -hmm. To the investor. So, and why did why is it a, a huge issue now? Yeah. It's because we have a huge gap in finding funding mm -hmm. for the implementation of sustainable development goals. Yeah. Because if you look at the gap in financing that is needed to achieve the 17 goals, yeah. is uh, in the region of four to six trillion dollars every year, depending on the measurements that you are using, mm. and the traditional. Funding sources mm -hmm. for social development, which is development finance institutions, government and philanthropy, could only contribute so much. Right now, it's between the region of $250 billion to 350 mm. So where do you get this other money? But on the other extreme, you have about $20 trillion sitting on the asset under management. Okay. So we need to move some of those monies to the middle which is where impact investing. So, so if you are looking at the spectrum of investment, mm. you have socially focused groups on one end. You have impact investing in the middle because it's looking targeting social impact and financial return. Yeah. Then on the extreme, you have commercial capital that want uh, mm. you know, uh, risk-adjusted returns. So this whole idea of impact investing is to move mm. some of those $20 trillion yeah. dollars to the middle. So that those who are investing in this space mm. can achieve their financial return. Maybe mm. it's a little below market mm -hmm. level, but also make social impact, which mm. will make them do good. Very, very good, Innocent. Uh, Maria, Innocent just uh, made a crucial uh, you know, uh, point there. Just one off question here. Mm. Moving those funds and uh, helping it get to where it needs to be. Mm. But uh, we have our own peculiar problems when it comes to uh, such funding. Okay, in terms of uh, how, how transparent is that process? How do you monitor? Is there any mechanism to monitor that that funds actually get to those who are in need of it? Um, to answer your question on mm. the surface, 
Um, there really is no mechanism mm. in terms of doing that. But the thing is that if you look at the market, market is not really controlled. Okay. So um, it depends on... Um, uh, I would like Innocent to answer that particular question because right. I really don't want to be too... Um, okay, all right. Innocent, take it from there. Yeah. So uh, within the impact investing community, mm. there is what is called impact washing. Okay. You know, people who are driven by profit. Mm -hmm. But because there are some incentives by government and DFIs, mm. they say, oh, I'm also an impact investor. Yeah. So mm -hmm. measurement is critical. How are you measuring mm. your returns? What are the markers mm. you are using? Mm. So to avoid those uh, impact washing tendencies, mm -hmm. organizations like Impact Investors Foundation yeah. were set up to, on the one hand, we want to reduce the barriers mm for investors to come into the impact investing space. Right. But on the other hand, we also want to measure them as they are getting all those incentives that come through blended finance and mm. all of that. Mm. They are really investing on things that have measurable social impact. Yeah. Now, very good. Maria, let's talk about uh, this blended finance. How can this be used as a strategy for increasing private contribution in the financing and deliveries of uh, SDGs? Um, okay. Blended finance actually is the... Um um, strategic use of catalytic capital from okay. um, the public or philanthropic sources um, to um, increase, if you say, um, investments from the private sector. So the first thing I would even want us to understand is what um, blended finance is. I think in 2015, when we had um, a conference, um, I think United Nations had a conference in um, Addis Ababa, okay. there was a Gross um, um, interest in blended finance or growth, flow of interest in um, blended finance to Africa. And um, sub Saharan Africa receiving about 42% mm. of um, blended finance. And um, Nigeria being one of the top five destination countries for blended finance um, has about, I think, um, it's not so, it's, it's not so, um, um, how will I put it right now? Um, Based on what we are, there are, are problems in Nigeria. Blended yeah. finance is not really helping us. Uh, can you help me out here, please? <laughs> so uh, I guess what we need to uh, see here is that it is well and good to say, oh, we want to move private sector yeah. funds right. to impact investors. Yeah. But there are challenges. Okay. You know, one, as a private investor, I have perceived the risk I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So there's also actual risk. Okay. So to narrow that gap between perceived risk in investing mm -hmm. to actual investing, somebody has to step up mm -hmm. to de-risk that investment. Yeah. So essentially what Impact Investors does is the guarantees it gives mm -hmm. to mainstream commercial capital yeah. that if you come and invest in, that, in this space, as a government, we'll be willing to take the first loss. Mm -hmm. As a government, we'll be willing to give concessionary loans as a government, we'll be willing to guarantee you. Look at the anchor borrowers program we True. have, yeah. which the central bank is funding. Mm. You know, trying to link uh, middlemen who do food processing or agricultural processing with the smallholder far farmers so that through that link, their yields can grow. So without the government coming to create such a mechanism, it will be difficult for private sector funds to come in. But look yeah. at the market for private investment. Every country in the world is looking for private investment and they are putting all kinds of incentives mm. in the space for that investment to come. So for you as a country to attract that, there are things you need to do. You know, it could be policy framework, it could be uh, reducing uh, the, the kind of returns or the kind of uh, interest you charge on loans. For yeah. instance, the UK came up with what they call big society capital. They mopped okay. up uh, dormant accounts in the UK to set up the fund. And if you are borrowing from that, you get it at a reduced rate from what you could ordinarily do. And okay. now because of that, you'll be willing to come and invest in that space. So that's what it does. But then there are also challenges because mm. in an environment like ours where there is policy inconsistency. Mm. So if Buhari's government is implementing and called Buhari's program, mm. if by 2023 a new government comes in, with that government also guarantee mm. that so that investment can continue to flow. So the convening we are having is essentially addressing that, yes, we want to blend more finance, mm. but there are challenges and risks that key stakeholders in this space, which is government, development finance institutions, yeah. and philanthropic capital need to address mm. for more mainstream commercial capital to mm. come into the 
impact investing space. Very good, Innocent. But I would like us to still be specific here. Mm -hmm. What kind of specific challenges do you expect within that uh, blended finance market space, mm -hmm. especially for new stakeholders? I just mentioned one. Mm -hmm. One is policy inconsistency. Okay. If I am coming to invest in Nigeria and I want to invest with a target of over 10 to 15 years, which will straddle government, All right. would that policy still be implemented, still be in place for this long-term uh, investment eye that I have? Okay. Yeah. So if that is not addressed, that is a problem. And when I make guarantee as a government that if you come and invest, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Will I fulfill it when you are on ground? Okay. We have had experiences where people, because of the promises or policies of one government, they come in to invest, and in the middle of their investment, policies change, government change, new governments do not want to commit to the policies of their predecessors. So yeah. these are the things that scare away investors. And more so, those you are bringing into the impact investing space, because these are long-term mm -hmm. investment. True. So they need guarantees that if they come on board, government will stay true to the policies that it puts in place. So these are the things we'll be looking at tomorrow. All right, well, Maria, you know, they are all looking towards this uh, tomorrow. So what can people expect from this uh, convention, uh, yeah. the summit? The convention will be a day-long event, mm. and in the morning session we have two panel sessions, and the opening will be done by His Excellency, the um, Governor of Lagos State, and we have the keynote address by Jennifer Price, who is the president and CEO of Carvet Capital. Carvet Capital is one of the biggest impact investors in the world. And um, we will have the two panel sessions. The first one will be looking at um, the role of government, DFIs and philanthropy in de-risking social investment. Mm -hmm. And the second panel session will be mm -hmm. on um, blended finance vehicles, um, what actually works. Mm -hmm. Um, in the afternoon session is, uh, well, it's strictly by invitation, is uh, IIF Deal Summit, where we will have um, social enterprises actually meet with investors with the aim of having to sign mm, some right. deals. Okay. And in the evening, we have the awards and the dinner ceremony to mm. identify social enterprise mm. and an investor okay. in the impact investment. All right, very good. Now, Innocent, uh, in uh, like uh, 10 seconds, what are the prospects for this concept, you know, blended finance in Nigeria on the long term? 10 seconds quickly. It's very promising. Mm -hmm. It needs more stakeholders on All board. Right. Private investors need to come in because without their support, mm. government will not stop. But government needs to guarantee that when people come in, policy right. will stay. Very good. Uh, Maria Glover, Innocent, you come up. Many thanks for your thoughts on those issues.